Good evening. Welcome to St. Raphael's Catholic Charismatic Prayer Group for Tuesday, June the 9th, 2020. My name is Dave Noe, one of the leaders of the prayer group. This is week seven, the final week of the Life in the Spirit seminar entitled Transformation in Christ. In John chapter 15, verse 16, it says, You did not choose me. I chose and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that endures. The Holy Spirit chose us to grow in our Christian identity, to bear much fruit. This new life is what helps us to grow and produce much fruit and be effective in our spiritual lives. The Holy Spirit is working to transform us and make us holy. The Holy Spirit draws, is drawing us into a deeper union with God and with other Christians on the journey. Listen to St. Paul's words to the Romans in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And now, brothers, I beg you through the mercy of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you may judge what is God's will, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. We begin tonight with a sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening psalm for tonight is Psalm 95, verse 1 through 3. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us greet him with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. For the Lord is a great God and a great King over all gods. Our opening prayer. Holy Spirit, create a new heart in us, Lord, to fall deeper and deeper in love with you. Breathe in us a new spirit to be transformed into the persons you called each one of us to be from birth. Allow your word to be a lamp upon our feet to guide our every step with the confidence that you are leading and guiding us. You are a faithful and trustworthy God in whom we place our lives and our all in your secure hands. Let us experience you more and more in this time of praise and worship. Help us to sell out totally to your love. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our sanctuary. joy 
his feet. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you, Lord, for this time of praise and worship. Praise helps us to move from ourselves into your presence and to come under your ever fresh and ever new anointing. Help us, your children, to hear your words and to respond. Speak, Lord. Your people are listening. Hello, everyone. This week's prophetic word is love one another. And the Bible passage is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, which is, Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. So this week's prophetic word is love one another. God bless you. Have a good night. And thank you all for participating in this Life in the Spirit seminar. May you be blessed with a lifelong relationship of this Holy Spirit and his power and all of his gifts and his love. Bye-bye. Greetings. Today, this very day, this very hour, may this be the time for our transformation into a new lifestyle in the Holy Spirit. It is your decision, but you have the helper, the Holy Spirit, to instruct and guide you, as it says in John chapter 14, 26. We must be like the Father in Mark in chapter 9 and 24 and respond to the fact that we do believe, but we need help in our lack of trust. How do we continue in our journey towards a trust that is transforming. Alone, we will not succeed in receiving all that God has for us in order to have life, that life to the fullest. What we need is to seek others who are one mind and one heart, to seek this fullness of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2 and 42, after receiving the Holy Spirit, the apostles form into communal life to study the apostles' teachings, sharing of the breaking of the bread, and studying the scriptures to witness to the truth in their everyday life. As we can see in the beginning of Acts, they were previously told to wait for the Holy Spirit, and then you will receive power. But in order to do that, you need to become my witnesses. Will you become his witnesses after today? I know through my personal witness, that these ingredients that we have been talking about, the whole Life in the Spirit seminar, have transformed my life and reinforced the promise of God for a lifestyle and the fullness of Jesus. Is it time to shed your wineskin, our stubbornness, to receive a new wineskin that brings fullness of life? In summary, Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 11, he says, I tell you all of this, that my joy may be complete in you. What a better promise could you ask for? So let's open our hearts, mind, and ears to listen to Father Al's teachings of transformation. May God bless you overwhelmingly with the complete joy and peace of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is Lord. Proclaim it from the rooftops. Let everyone know who died for you, who rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is Lord. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer. Glad you're with us. This is the last of a seven-part series, the last of the Life in the Spirit seminars, the seventh seminar. The title is Transformation we need to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. But before we get into all that, we just want to bless everybody. What does this water mean? It means that by baptism and by faith, we have given our lives to Christ. We have become new creations. We are born again. We are begotten from above. We have a new nature we are children of God on the way to heaven, victorious and free on earth. 
Just, just think, well, all, that, all that is just part of what this water means. Let's pray right now. Father, we just pray for many people to listen, to watch these programs. People you're calling, people who have never watched anything like this before. Satan, we stop you, Lord. Pour out the Holy Spirit even as we teach about the Holy Spirit. Lord, may we be able to proclaim the word in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, confirm this word with signs and wonders. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Expel demons. Thank you, Lord, for these precious promises and the power of your people. Lord, 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 we give ourselves to you. And we thank you for giving yourself to us, even to dying on the cross for us. Amen. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, the last of the seven seminars on the life in the Spirit. Our opening scripture is Romans in chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This uh, helps us understand the title of this teaching. We said the title is Transformation. Romans 12 and verse 2. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you may judge what is God's will, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. We have been conformed to the world. In doing so, we are deformed. We are formed out of shape. Therefore, we must be reformed. And how is that possible? By the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. I have been deformed by my conformity to the world. I must be reformed by the transformation power of the Holy Spirit. This reformation, this transformation of a deformed and conformed person is called sanctification or making a person holy. So the Lord wants to make us holy. That's why the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that makes us holy. You don't have to be holy to receive the Spirit, but you have to be holy to keep the Spirit. The Spirit is going to work a work of holiness in you and in me. One of the first things the Spirit does in a person's life is the fourth beatitude. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Jesus says, Happy, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for holiness sake, they shall be satisfied. Matthew 5, verse 6. Most people, they're not interested in holiness. They're not interested in opportunities for holiness. They're not interested in the Holy Bible or Holy Mary or Holy Mass or Holy Communion or the Holy Rosary or Holy anything. They're just not interested in holiness. They have many other desires. Desires for money, desires for pleasure, desires for uh, sexual stimulation, desires for power, desires for all kinds of possessions, many, many other desires, but not much as far as holiness. If that, if that were the case, uh, that we desired holiness, almost everybody would be watching these Christian programs and the big network programs or some of the other stuff on cable. There wouldn't be anybody watching it. So the, the, you know, the, the people advertising for the Super Bowl be advertising for this program. And they wouldn't be able to get any advertisers for the Super Bowl, so they just drop it. But obviously, our, our hungers, our desires are not for holiness. They're for everything but holiness. But when the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that makes us holy, moves in our lives, one of the first things the Holy Spirit will do is give us a desire for holiness and a desire to take advantage of opportunities that would make us holy. Now, as we get that desire, at first we feel like, well, there's this one area in my life where I'm really not holy at all. Holy means the character of God. Holy means being like God. Holy means being set apart for God's use. That's what holy means. And uh, at first you think, well, the way I talk is really not holy. I don't, can't imagine God talking like this. 
So I guess I better get that straightened up, and then we'll be all set. So the Lord moves, the Holy Spirit moves, and your conversation changes. You say, wow, now I guess I pretty well got it now. I'm holy there, and that was the main problem. But then all of a sudden you say, wait a minute. It's not just my conversation, my mind. My mind is way. I can't imagine God thinking the thoughts I think. i got to get my mind together and say, well, I'm lustful. I'm a lustful person. I, don't, I know God's not a lustful person. So I gotta, I've got to repent of that and be set free from that. Say, well, I'm a real greedy person too. Well, I've got to have a different attitude towards money and possessions. Say, well, I, I'm a person that's really, really unforgiving and resentful. I never really thought anything of it. Everybody I knew was unforgiving and resentful. But um, I, that's not holy. God's not unforgiving and resentful, so I've got to get rid of that too. Well, I never thought I had a had to change my ways of eating. I didn't think I had to change my lifestyle. I didn't think I had to change my TV viewing. I didn't think I had to change all that stuff, but I can't imagine God watching TV like I watch TV. I can't imagine God eating what I eat. I can't imagine God being compulsive in this eating or smoking or drinking or some sort of sexual com compulsive behavior. Uh, I, that has to go too, because I would never be holy then. Um, so uh, after you get that desire for holiness, you, you start to see why you got the desire. First uh, Peter chapter 1 and, and verse 15. Become holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct after the likeness of the Holy One who called you. Remember, Scripture says, Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy in every aspect of our conduct. Now, we realize that at first we think, well, holiness is just kind of dropping a couple of really bad things, and that pretty well takes care of it. But then you start to say, wow, no, the holiness would be a dramatic, total transformation of my lifestyle. Now, you, you're starting to catch on. That's right. That's what it means. Holiness is acting like God, thinking like God, feeling like God, spending your money like God, eating like God, seeing your body and your mind and your soul and relationships and future and, and money and job and everything relating to it all as God would relate to it. And it, it just requires a dramatic total change. But uh, because the Spirit is leading you to accept Jesus as Lord in a deeper way. Now, you already accept Jesus as Lord before you receive the Spirit, but, but you've only accepted Him as Lord as far as you could understand that. Now, with the Spirit moving, you see the, the panorama of the Lordship of Jesus. You see the, the total, the total Lordship of Jesus. And like it says in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. So what happens? Philippians in chapter 3, verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Those things I used to consider gain, I have now reappraised as loss in the light of Christ. I have come to rate all as loss in the light of the surpassing knowledge of my Lord Jesus Christ. For His sake I have forfeited everything. I have counted all else dung or rubbish, so that Christ may be my wealth and I may be in Him. Because I've got to know this Jesus personally. Because I have really fallen in love with this Jesus, He has surpassed all the values and habits and priorities of my life. And that surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ has caused me to reappraise everything. And the things I used to consider so important, I now have reappraised as lost in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you watching, watching this program say, I can't believe it. I spend most of my life watching just the regular television pornography, and here I am watching some sort of religious program. I can't believe it. What's happening to me? The light of the surpassing knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ is what is happening to you. Praise God. Okay, now I've, I've told you holiness means being like God, and that means major, major lifestyle changes, and the Spirit will give you a desire for that. Maybe not an all-consuming, very strong desire, but it'll still be there, and if you just go with it, the Holy Spirit will really do the job. Now, more details 
of how the Holy Spirit works. Well, as he tries to change your lifestyle, one of the first things he'll try to do is turn you off to the things of the world, the worldly ways, the things that just are focused on self and pleasure and lust and pride and greed and some things that don't seem that bad, but still they're not focused on the Lord. They're just more or less selfish, petty pleasures. He'll turn you off to these things. Now, you've been turned on to these things. You've been very turned on to these things. That, those are your whole life. But he's going to turn you off to them. Now, now, how's he going to do it? Well, it says in John 16, 8, it says, It's better that Jesus leave because when he leaves, the Holy Spirit will come, the paraclete will come, and he will prove the world wrong about sin, justice, and condemnation. The Holy Spirit will prove the world wrong, will convict the world. Now, how does he do that? In Galatians chapter 6, and I believe it's 14, Galatians 6, 14, it says the Holy Spirit, well, the, this is not, they don't say the Holy Spirit does this, but the Pope, Pope John Paul II, about three years ago when he wrote an encyclical on the Holy Spirit, he put John 16, 8 together with Galatians 6, 14, and he says the Holy Spirit will take a person to Calvary, not literally, but, but just figuratively. Uh, interiorly, spiritually. He'll take a person to Calvary and, and he'll show us the connection between Jesus' suffering and death and some of our worldly ways, our worldly desires, and our worldly sins. And when we see that connection, we say, I've had it with the world. Let me illustrate this. You've all probably heard of the group called MAD, M-A-D-D, -D, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. Well, uh, these people don't see alcohol the way most people in our society do. Uh, these people, uh, most people in our society think alcohol is just kind of, you know, just entertaining. There's nothing wrong with just drinking a little bit as long as you don't get drunk. Nowadays, you say you can get drunk just as long as you don't drive. You used to say as long as you don't get drunk. Now they say go ahead and get drunk, just don't drive. But so it's slipping and slipping our morality. But uh, we kind of think alcohol is just, just fun and don't think much of it. Um, even churches, a lot of churches will promote the, the sale of alcohol, or the consumption of alcohol, and say, oh, well, you know, it's just, we're not getting drunk. We're just, just uh, having a little social time together. Well, so we have a very permissive attitude towards alcohol in our society. Germans there, German beer, Irish, Irish whiskey. Italians, Italian wine, French, French wine. You know, almost every group's got their alcohol. And, of course, they all drink their others, uh, other groups do. Um, but these people called mad, mothers against drunk drivers, they don't see it that way. They're dead set against alcohol. They don't want to have anything to do with alcohol. They don't have a permissive attitude towards alcohol. They have a very militant opposition to alcohol. Well, why? Why are they different than the rest of the people in our society? Because... Uh, they see the connection between the death of their child and alcohol. And when they saw that connection between that death and alcohol, they had it with alcohol. When we see the connection between alcohol and all kinds of other things too, in the ways of the world, and the death of our older brother Jesus, well then we have had it, absolutely had it, with those worldly ways. We've had it with lust. We've had it with the prime time pornography of television. We've had it with the, the permissiveness of our society. We've had it with the unforgiveness and the resentment and the gossip. We've had it with all this compulsive behavior. We've had it with adultery and fornication. We've had it with masturbation and artificial means of birth control. We've had it with uh, overeating, we've had it with manipulation, we've had it with greed, we've had it with injustice, we've had it with all that stuff because the Holy Spirit has taken us to the cross and by the cross we have been crucified to the world. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. We have been crucified to the world and the world has been crucified to us. We've had it. There's, there's, we, don't, we don't care about the world. The world doesn't care about us. We've had a clean break with the world. Now, that's part of making a person holy. Holy means you've, 
you aren't, aren't interested in the things that are not compatible with the holiness of God. No, you can still be tempted, but there's been a break, and you've really got soured on the world. Praise God. Now, this is one way the Spirit works. In addition to this, the Spirit will, will also just give us desires for all kinds of, of things of the Spirit. And of course, when you have desires for the things of the Spirit and desires for the things of the world, you know, you can't do everything. You only got so much time, you only got so much energy. So something has to give. So the Spirit will constantly give us desires for, the, for things of God. And then if we just go for those, even if we're not turned off to the things of the world, we just don't seem to get around to those things. One of my worldly problems, see, and some of these worldly problems don't seem so bad, but they still are made gods in our lives, and they are bad because they're ahead of God. And my thing was watching TV, especially watching sports on TV. I just watch sports, sports, sports constantly. Now, you may not understand that, but, but uh, you know, I was into that. If they would have had ESPN years ago, I would have just watched 200 straight ball games and died at 2 a.m. watching Australian rugby or something like that. It would have just been ridiculous. But, um, but the Lord did, didn't turn me off to TV. Well, he did. He kind of took me to the cross, and I, could see, I would watch stuff on TV that I never, never even dreamed of, didn't phase me at all before. But now I watch this stuff on TV, and it really turns me off. But, it, but I would just kind of say, well, then I'm not going to watch that, but I'll just stick to the ball games. So this worked for a while. It, it worked in a way. The Spirit really turned me off to the things of the world, but I still was turned on to some of them. Now, what happened there, the Spirit gave me a desire to pray and to pray communally that I really had no desire of, to do before. He also gave me a desire for Christian fellowship and Christian community I had no desire for before. And when I would give in to these desires for Christian community, spend some time with the brothers and sisters in the Lord, pray, uh, it would seem like it always would conflict with the things of the world. And so these things started getting pushed out of my life by the Holy Spirit conflicting with those things. Praise God. I thank God He did do that. Now I'll give you two scriptures on this. This is Galatians in chapter 5 and um, verse 16. Paul says, My point is that you should live in accord with the Spirit and you will not yield to the cravings of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the Spirit. So the, our carnal desires, our worldly desires, they push the Spirit out of our lives. But it's the other way around too. The Spirit lusts against the flesh. The two are directly opposed. As we go with the Spirit, those things of the world just seem like we just never get around to them like we used to. Another scripture that says this, I think rather clearly, Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. If you live according to the flesh, if your life is basically just fulfilling your carnal desires, your pleasure-seeking desires, your selfish desires, your worldly desires, if that's what your life is, in most people's life, that's what it is. They wake up and say, what do I'm going to do? How do I feel? I'm going to eat this, I'm going to smoke this, I'm going to drink this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to feel that. Well, that's just being a slave of these desires. It's basically the way animals live. But remember, we as human beings are more than animals. But if you live according to the flesh, what happens? You will die. You will die. But if by the Spirit, notice by the Spirit, if by the Spirit you put to death the evil deeds of the body, you will live. Here you are saying, i got to quit smoking. I know God doesn't want that. I'm going to, from now on, I've resolved, I made my New Year's resolution, I'm not going to smoke. That usually doesn't work. Uh, remember, it says, if by the Spirit, not by your willpower, not by your psyching yourself out, but if by the Spirit you put to death the evil deeds of the body, then you will live. And you kind of say, well, I need to stop smoking, but if I could just keep giving into this desire to pray, if I just kept giving into this desire to serve uh, God's people, if I just kept giving into this desire to uh, uh, reach out and help these people, if I just gave into this calling to serve in this one way, uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't just take the cigarette out of your mouth, but it would uh, it would conflict with it, and hopefully that conflict will eventually result in those things being just pushed out of your life as the Spirit 
lust against the flesh. Now, of course, it can go the other way around too. The, the, the flesh can lust against the spirit. But let's go with the spirit's desires and let's just push those carnal, worldly, fleshly desires right out of business. Praise the Lord. So I hope you understand how it is to be holy, how it is to get a holy lifestyle, how it is to be holy in every aspect of our conduct. The Holy Spirit turns us off to the world and turns us on to the things of the Spirit. That doesn't mean we have to drop all the things of the world, but we have a power leading us in that direction. And as we just get that new lifestyle, we get that new wine skin, then that powerful new wine of the Holy Spirit will be able to be uh, held in that new lifestyle without a major conflict occurring. Uh, let me conclude with a prayer for holiness from the Word of God. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, a prayer for holiness. I, I love this prayer. May the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. That means complete. It doesn't mean you never made a mistake but it means you're complete. It means it's not like, well, I kind of talk the way God talks, but I sure don't think. Well, see, that's not, that's not perfect. Uh, well, I, I'm kind of holy in the way I, I uh, deal with money, but my sexual, uh, sexuality is way out of whack. I do, I'm very lustful. Well, see, that's not perfect. That's not complete. Perfect doesn't mean you never got anything wrong, but it means every area of your life is, is holy. Every area of your life is being made more holy, more like God. You haven't left out areas of your life. So the prayer is, may the God of peace make you perfect, complete, covering every area, complete in holiness. May he preserve you whole and entire spirit, soul, and body. Everything is holy. Our spirit, our soul, and our body, irreproachable at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I like this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. He who calls us is trustworthy. Therefore, he will do it. When you hear this, say, I can't do it. I know it needs to be done, but there's no way I can do it. Don't worry. He'll do it. Now, he's not going to force it on you. You have to, like Mary said, let it be done unto you according to God's will. But still, he'll do it if you just let it be done. Okay? And we're concluding our seven weeks of teaching the Life in the Spirit seminar. Let me just focus on just a couple things. Some of you are saying, is the Spirit active? Did I really receive the Spirit? Am I going to grow in the Spirit? What's happening? You've got a lot of questions. I, I want to focus on, on three things. One is, be sh as long as you're evangelizing, as long as you're telling people about Jesus and how He loves us and how He died on the cross for us and rose from the dead, as long as you're doing that, I'm pretty sure the rest of it's okay. But if you've got all kinds of other things going on and you're not doing that, I think you, you better really turn to the Lord. That's a key. Make sure you're evangelizing. That was the key from the very beginning in Acts 2. Please, brothers and sisters, focus on this. If you're doing that, I think the rest will just come. If you're not doing that, I think there's severe problems. Also, looking at suffering, not useless suffering, not suffering because of our sinfulness, but, the, but redemptive suffering, suffering in the pattern of Jesus' death. 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, if we suffer for being a Christian, not for being a sinner, not for our problems, but when we suffer for being a Christian, that's through persecution and self-sacrifice and things like that. When we got that kind of suffering, that means the Spirit has come to rest in our lives. So I hope you're being persecuted. I hope you merit persecution. I hope you're sacrificing for the kingdom of God. I hope you're enduring those kind of sufferings. It's a good sign if you are. Third point, beside evangelizing and suffering, the gift of tongues. Praising God in another language. We talked about it in earlier sessions. If you missed it, just get it on tape. But brothers and sisters, please praise the Lord in, in your own native tongue and then in, in, in other tongues by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just really praise the Lord. I know in, in our culture in the United States, most people aren't very attracted to that gift. Well, that's why, why that gift is even more important because we have to die to ourselves to really live out that gift and use this gift. So those three things, evangelization, suffering, and tongues, focus on them as we conclude these seven Life in the Spirit seminars. Thank you for being with us. You have the Holy Spirit. Now use the gifts of the Spirit. 
grow in the fruit of the Spirit, be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Holy Spirit. Let's pray right now. Father, we just asked that we would be able to live a life in the Spirit until your Son Jesus comes back or we die, whatever comes first. Lord, remove all hindrances. May we grow in the Spirit day by day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some closing remarks. For our closing tonight, I would like to share from St. Paul's letter to Timothy. In the second letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 through 12, St. Paul, who is in prison for his faith, reminds us to be faithful to the call, no matter the consequences. And I quote, For this reason I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God, bestowed when my hands were laid on you. The Spirit of God has given us is no cowardly spirit, but rather one that makes us strong, loving, and wise. Therefore, never be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But with the sake, strength which comes from God, bear your share of the hardship which the gospel entails. God has saved us and has called us to a holy life, not because of any merit of ours, but according to his own design, the grace held out to us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior. He has robbed death of its power and has brought life and immortality into clear light through the gospel. In the service of this gospel, I have been appointed preacher, an apostle, and teacher for its sake. I undergo present hardships, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed, and I am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. For our prayer intercessions tonight, remind us, Holy Spirit, to be ever thankful for the gifts of the Holy Spirit and seek this renewed life in the many facets of our, our everyday life calls us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace in this troubled wor world, and let it begin with us. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for Pope Francis, Archbishop Dennis Schnur, Bishop Joe Binzer, all priests, all religious, and each one of us during this time of social separation and isolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the prayer intentions we were asked to pray for on the prayer line and personally. We pray to the Lord. We pray for God's blessing tonight. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. In closing, I'd like to thank everyone who made this life in the Spirit possible. The teachers, intercessory prayer team, Word Gift, Praise and Worship, the, protect, the Technical Production Team, especially our Lord, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Many thanks to those who joined us through this Life in the Spirit seminar. Please join us again next week on YouTube. May our God be glorified in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen.